1926, Dallas, Texas. Yes. In the Depression. Depression baby. I think that's why I'm an only child. Well, tell me about that. What, what do you remember when you were young? I was young? born, as I said, I think on South Boulevard. And um, when I was three years old, uh, we moved away for six years to Oklahoma City and then San Antonio I think because of my father's jobs. I don't have a lot of recollection. I remember in San Antonio, we had some distant cousins. But then when we moved back to Dallas, we moved to the Oaklawn area mm -hmm. on Herschel. We lived in duplexes, Herschel and Prescott off of Oaklawn near Throckmorton. And so I lost, I'm a native Dallasite, I think, but I had no South Dallas, you know, socialization. So I didn't go to school with all these kids, and I don't know who's related to who to this day. I have a total vacancy of all of that wonderful growing up in South Dallas, going to school with each other like everyone did. Uh, I don't have one close friend in Dallas that I grew up with. Well, now, you moved around when you were very young. That was for your dad's work. Yeah. Well, do you remember what he your dad He was really uh, sort of a bookkeeper, and then he got into women's fashion and ended up with a small dress factory with did, a partner. Did your folks ever talk to you about the Depression at all as you no. got a little bit older? No, nope, I really didn't ask enough questions, you know, you always regret that you didn't ask your parents more mm -hmm. about their life. Now, now tell me more about, your, your dad got into a business with a partner, you just right. tell, tell us more about that. Well, it was Marbrook, it was Bernard Marcus, and he was really the pattern cutter. And it was more sportswear, blouses, skirts, and my dad was the outside you know, he traveled on the road with the line to all of the stores in the Oklahoma, Texas area, all the merchants, a lot of Jewish merchants. And, um, and he took care of the books and the business side. And they had a few operators. It was very small, but it was worked well. It was really just, I guess, toward the beginning of World War II. And uh, so... Now, do you remember the war at all? Well, I actually went to college during World War mm -hmm. II, so it was a very different kind of at University of Texas, Austin, we have to say now. Mm -hmm. We used to just say UT, right. but um, it was a different kind of college life, which worked out great for me because uh, it was more like a girls' school during the week because right. so many of the guys were gone and there wasn't as much competition <laughs> for guys. <laughs> so the girls really became very close, right, which right. I understand before wasn't the truth. Right, right, <laughs> you know, right. this one didn't, in the sorority house didn't speak to that one. And, but we really were like a girls' school. And on the weekend, with all the army camps nearby, there were gobs of guys, especially a lot of the Jewish guys would come to the Jewish sorority houses on the weekend for socialization. Mm -hmm. So it was a very different college experience. Now was your dad, was he involved with World War I at all? No. Okay. He, I always think of my dad because he was the only one in his family that came, I think he was 16 and didn't speak a word of English mm -hmm. and got off at the train station and had a letter of directions to stay with a family in South Dallas who evidently took in borders and didn't, you know, he just waited there until someone understood what he was saying and well, told him which bus to get on. Now where did, where did your dad come from? He came from Deersburg, Germany. Okay, and Which he was 16 years old, and he came by himself. He came through Galveston, actually. What did, what did he, what did he um, tell you? Um, you know, he's 16, and his family wanted him out of Germany. I really, you know, don't know what precipitated his coming, since none of the rest of his family. Uh, one brother, the two brothers came later, but he was the only one that came early. and. Did he ever tell you anything at all about that traveling, the trip, or anything? No. I just remember he came from Galveston and 
How he got from Galveston to Dallas, I don't know. Do you know what year it was that he came over? I think I've tried to look back. I think 1911 or 12. 1911, okay. You never saw your grandparents then on, on your dad's no, side? No, no. Okay, what about your grandparents on your mom's side? Uh, really, my mother's family uh, were from Germany. She was one of nine children, and they wow. came also young one by one. But they settled in the Pacific Northwest, very strange, in the northeast corner of Washington State, like north of Spokane, Washington, really near Canada and Idaho. Now, do you know why your dad was sent to Galveston and your mom um, to the Pacific well, Northwest? Well, I know that my mother's family came because they already had an uncle that had a store in Calvo, Washington. Right, right. So, so where did your parents meet? Well, it was interesting. My dad was working for someone in Marvel, Arkansas, which uh, had a little Jewish, it was a tiny little town, but there were some Jewish people living there. He was a bookkeeper. My mother had a sister living in Marvel who was expecting her third child, so my mother came to help her sister. So my mother and dad met in this little bitty town in, this little, in Arkansas and got married, moved back to Dallas. Now your family that was left in Germany, um, there was World War I and then World War II, did you ever hear any? No, well, I just know that two of my mother's brothers did come to this country. One lived with us for a while and was in Dallas. The other went on to California, but the others were all lost in the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. Sisters and mother, so I never knew any grandparents on either side, really. Let's go back to high school. What was life like for you? Well, I, as I said, I lived in this Oakland area with a small elementary school, mm -hmm. Stephen J. Hay, which is another school now. It's still there. I think it's some sort of special girls school. I went to North Dallas for two years, high school. There were very few, you can name the number of Jewish students on one hand. And then we moved north again, two doors from Highland Park High School. And I did my last two years at Highland Park. And uh, there again, I really you know, didn't go all through Park City schools, so there were more Jewish kids there, but right, nothing right. like <laughs> the South Dallas crowd. Right, right. So I always had some close friends, but I never had a crowd of friends, you know, that I hear mm -hmm. other people talking about, you know. Now, your husband, Arthur, where did you meet him? Was it high school, college, well, after college? Arthur's six years older, mm -hmm. so that's a big difference at a certain point in your right. life. So he was a native Dallas side, grew up in South Dallas with all of, a lot of friends. And um, I met him just before I went to college mm -hmm. in 1943. And... Uh, he was finishing up at SMU. His father uh, had, was really sort of a pioneer in the credit industry. He was credit manager of A. Harrison Company and really book in the accounting department, but he knew credit was the name of the future. And even at A. Harris, he gave his best customers a little wooden disc mm -hmm. to identify themselves. It was sort of a precursor to the credit card. So Arthur's father took ill, so he had been at University of Texas for two years, dropped out. His father had just started an insurance business, and uh, his mother was helping him there, and his aunt, he had a single aunt, and his father passed away in 1940. And then Arthur went to SMU to finish up, and he would take his classes in the morning, so, and then he'd take the streetcar downtown to his office mm -hmm. to work in the afternoon. And then he went into the service as a officer's school in the Navy. And uh, so most of our romance was via letters. And then when he, we dated, had a few dates before I went to college and he went to the service. Now where, where did, was he stationed in the war? Uh, well, he really did North Africa, he did D-Day, and then he did the Rhine River crossing.
Mm -hmm. And he had some interesting stories. That's he always fun. said he had a good war. Uh -huh. <laughs> and his last year, he was at Camp Elliott in California, and I was in the sorority house. So he would go to the bar and get a roll of quarters and call me. So when the phone rang at the sorority house at midnight, everyone said, "That's Arthur." <laughs> <laughs> um, tell us some. Of the, what was, tell me one of his stories from the war. Well when they were going to do the Rhine River crossing, was in small boats, mm -hmm. he, LCBP. He said his first boat, his crew was out of Portsmouth Naval Prison. <laughs> so he said he didn't want to turn his back too often. Mm -hmm. On the Rhine River crossing, they were doing, you know, they lifted these both small boats, the crane, right. and then dropped them down in the water. So his boat hit a rock, and he told his commanding officer, he said, I'm not going to take that boat out. It's hit a rock. It's going to be cracked. And he said, well, he said, you know, he could have been court-martialed, but evidently he won his point. And the next day when they looked at the boat, it was cracked. Right, so he comes home from the war. Is this when we get married then? Yeah, he comes home from the war, and I'm uh, back from college. And, uh, you know, we dated a while, and then we got married on March the 23rd, 1947. Mm -hmm. And the, we went back into the insurance business now? Yes. Okay. And did you go in, into work or did you stay home? Well, I, no, I stayed at the beginning. I worked in my father's office and did a lot of the book work. And uh, our first apartment was on one of his clients, customers, had bought an apartment house on McKinney Avenue across from North Dallas High School. Mm -hmm. So there was a vacant apartment and uh, my mother and I went to see it. My parents never were property owners. They really didn't buy a home right. until very late. And so I had a bedroom, a separate entrance, a bedroom, a bath, and a sitting room. And I told Arthur after I'd seen the apartment, I said, oh, why don't we just, you know, we have a great setup here. Why don't we live there? So Arthur set the tone immediately for our marriage. He said, you can live with me in that apartment or you can stay home and live with your parents. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, what did you choose? Uh, <laughs> um, talk to me about your, your children now. Well, I'm very fortunate. I had three wonderful grown children. My oldest son was, I was always a good student. I didn't learn a lot because I memorized very well. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it at the time. And so I sort of thought my son was like me because he was sort of a natural student really. And uh, he went to, you know, the public schools, Kramer, Franklin, Hillcrest. And then he went to East to Brown and went to Harvard Law School and uh, even clerked for a Supreme Court Justice. Married a fellow law student and lived in, he's lived in Bethesda, Maryland all these years. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Both have had very successful careers. I have two boys. My next son lives here fortunately and he's now a rheumatologist. And so he's doing great, and took, spent a lot of years in school to get where he got. He was a PA first, and uh, married late to someone who has two children, and uh, they're doing great. And lucky to have one here. Daughter is the baby, is not much of a baby, and she uh, finished school at Gosh. American University. Her senior year, she found out she had a talent for photography. So then she went and did another four years at the Art Center College of Design in Pasadena, California. Studied photography, went to New York to make it, which they all did at that time, only she never came back. Let's go back a little bit. Um, some of the fun things for you, do you remember the uh, the bands that you used to like when you were a kid? I do remember song sheets okay. that we would, you know, take the bus, my friends and I would take the bus downtown 
you know, go to a movie maybe, and then there were song sheets, you know, that had the printed words to the songs. Mm -hmm. And so we would buy a song sheet and sort of sing to each other. And, yeah. and I do remember that was different. And then I learned to drive a car on Northwest Highway when it was a two-lane road. And you thought like Christopher Columbus, if you moved, went north of Northwest Highway, you would fall off there. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you remember what kind of car you had first? We didn't have a car when we got married because right. Arthur put his name in and we did get a Pontiac finally. So we managed about a year, almost a year without a car. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when you were a kid the differences like, do you remember when the Iceman would come? I know I remember after we were married in our first house, I remember the Manor Bakery guy. Uh -huh. You would tell him which day you wanted certain things, uh -huh. that they had certain kind of cinnamon rolls, or the milkman, you just left the back door open, and they came and left them, and I guess we paid them once a month or once a week. A I don't remember. Today. Oh, yes. <laughs> Talk to me now about your involvement with the Jewish Community Center. Well, I really, uh, after we got married, we did have a wonderful group of friends. Mm -hmm. And I think the first, early on, starting in the late 50s, I volunteered a lot in the sisterhood at Temple Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. And I remember my, I did the yearbook. That was my first job to do this sisterhood yearbook. And I was lucky to do it under a person who, kept every step she did out of Papert. And here I'd never done a yearbook. And of course we didn't have computers and discs, so it was all, you know, you farmed out different pages to different people and they typed it up and you went to the printer. And uh, I did that and I was treasurer of sisterhood. And I guess the interesting thing uh, was uh, Pauline Cress and I did, Rabbi Olin at Temple Emanuel did a significant book series, which was, I guess, one of the first literary things in Dallas. He sort of used the book as a format to a message he wanted to give. Mm -hmm. And it was very unique and amazing, you know, how many people came from all around. He retired, became Rabbi Emeritus, and we had to fill in the slots. He did one, and other Rabbi Klein did one. So I did that, and worked at Temple, did tours when the new building, Temple, opened there at Northwest Highway in Hillcrest. And then I sort of moved to Council of Jewish Women, and uh, did a lot of projects there, and enjoyed that. Your happiest time in your life? Oh, I think I was happiest in my had my kids, and I said, so one of the, I did that so well, but only did it three times. It was my great talent. <laughs> but I enjoyed raising my kids, and, uh, and then it, the empty nest years were good, too, because Arthur and I started to travel more. We took family trips, mm -hmm. and Arthur sold not only all kinds, any kind of insurance, he said, he sold it, but he sold for a life insurance company that had wonderful meetings, uh, you know, in, mm -hmm. in resort areas. Now, in your lifetime, there's been so many momentous occasions. Of course, you were born around the Great Depression. It was World War II. Was there something that really affected you or your family? I do remember. What, what I was doing when I had the radio or the television on and heard about the Kennedy assassination. Where were you? Well, I had had a party the weekend before and had borrowed table and chairs for some friends, so I was walking across the den where the television was to return some of these items that I had borrowed, and uh, it was a terrible shock. And then more shocking to see the ruby shoot <laughs> Oswald mm -hmm. right in front of your eyes on television. What do you think was the greatest invention in your lifetime? Well, I guess all the computer things. Now you have um, five grandkids, three biological, two are step-grandkids. Right. Knowing how you were raised, 
in knowing how kids today are raised, what advice does grandma have? Each generation is so entirely different. I know, you know, our generation, the guys come back from service, some of them had to finish school. They wanted to get a job, go to work, get married and raise a family. And I remember being at a brunch and one of the guys said, what's all this being happy and fulfilled? <laughs> we just wanted to get a job and make a living. So there's a lot of difference and you know, I think about our parents that came over, a lot of them for Europe, couldn't speak English, had to make their own way, and how our kids are raised today. Even I sent my kids to college and I didn't take them, and they found their own places to live, but now it's even more protective. Now when kids go off to school, they like buy them a trousseau and get them there and set up their rooms. <laughs> I don't know, it's just different and times are different so I don't think you can, I think, I think my group's years, I think between World War II, those years were peaceful years, the world was simpler, most of us that worked hard, saved our money, we didn't need, you know, three cars and all these gadgets and we had a good life. Mm -hmm. Thanks for doing this today. Did a great job.